What's happening, everybody? What's going on? <clears throat> it is Paint with Josh in the studio. Friday night freestyle season finale. The season finale of season three. Man, it's going to be a fun one. So you can see what I've already done. I'm taking our Bob Ross liquid clear, right? First, you guys are going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich, right? Start tapping that screen if you're watching on TikTok. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube over there. We're going to come check all the cameras. Make sure everything's nice and looking good. There we go. Just like that, perfect. Everything looks fantastic. So, if you're watching them on Facebook, every so often, tap the screen a little bit. She pull those little uh, emojis up on the bottom and you can start to tap. So, I've covered the canvas in the Bob Ross Liquid Clear. It's the last of our Liquid Clear we used on this canvas over here. So, throw this sucker away. And then, all right, covered the bottom canvas in the Liquid Clear. And then we took all this crimson and brown. You can see our two colors that we used here. Our dark sienna and our crimson red. Take all, both those colors <clears throat> and we smashed them all over the canvas, right? In the brown, out of the dark section anyway. So after doing that, you guys decided to pop in on me as we were putting our Bob Ross liquid white onto the canvas, right? So we dipped it in and then we're just gonna put the little teeniest, tiniest bit. And look how you can drag that light across those trees. All depends on our pressure, on the amount of paint that's on the brush. And the more white that you pull across those trees, the further they're gonna look away in the distance. It's really cool. Really cool, especially when we start adding uh, all the red color into the sky. So, got to make sure you have your Bob Ross liquid white. It's literally the opposite of the liquid clear, and it's fantastic. Now, we're going to come over here, <clears throat> wash off our brush, and then we're really only going to use like five or six colors for this painting, and that's going to be it. So, make sure you're tapping the screen. Towards the end of the, uh, the show, we're going to be able to actually name the painting, right? You can buy the painting right now. Even as it sits, you can buy it right now with just the black canvas and the white on the top. All you're really doing is securing it for yourself towards the end of the show when it turns out really good. You're like, haha, I bought it in the beginning, right? So you can go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and purchase this painting right now, just how it sits, or later on, we're going to be able to name it. So start coming up with a name. And now we're going to get into the painting fun, you guys. Here's the fun bit. Okay, now, we've got our... Li uh, liquid white up on the top, liquid clear on the bottom, all this crimson everywhere. And what are we going to do? Just a deep red, dark sky. So let's go crimson and brown right on the brush, same time. Start dropping it up there. It's going to look really cool. Just really deep, dark red. We want to leave like a bright area, maybe behind this little bit of tree. Right? Very deep, dark red. All depends on the amount of color on our brush. So maybe get a little of our bright red from this side. And it'll just change it a little bit. And we'll come down in there and leave a little thing, just a little bit of red, right? And the more that you mix across these trees, the more faded and more distant they're going to look. Oh, it's starting to look cool already. Now let's take a little bit of that brown again and come down from the top, right? With all this red and crimson and brown on the brush, it starts to make this very neat little faded color. You can use both browns. I'm serious. Get that skin out of there, Josh. We don't want any skin on the painting. I can't have texture up in the sky like that. There we go, right? And as we drop down that color, start to crisscross, especially at the top. You get those very deep, dark bits, right? We're using the, the Van Dyke brown, which is the darkest brown, and the uh, dark sienna, which is the lighter brown. It always throws my brain off. It's like, why call it dark sienna if it's lighter brown? Call it light sienna. <laughs> it makes sense for me. Right? Take a little bit of those browns, a little bit of the crimson all over the place, and then we're just going to leave that little white area. Now we're going to come back in, Wash this brush off and then spread all that paint all across the place, right? You guys are going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And I'm going to be asking you questions throughout the show, right? Throughout the whole show, I'm going to ask you questions. And if you answer those questions correctly, I'll be giving you follows and shout outs and all sorts of stuff. So be on your toes, right? Because it usually comes down to the first person that answers correctly, right? So. I always say this, guys, right? Especially when we're talking about our first P of paint with Josh, the amount of paint that's on the brush, right? Now, you can always add paint, but you can never what once it's up there. You can always add, but you can't. Let's see if we can get a shout out going already. Who's the first one? Let's see. You've never heard it before. That's okay. Take it away, says uh, Hypnotic Beauty over there on TikTok. Thank you for that, right? You can always add more paint. You can never take it away. So once we've cleaned off our brush, nice and dry, dab it on a paper towel just to make sure that all the paint thinners out of that brush, 
We come into that light area where that white is, right? Instantly, it's going to start going like light pinkish because we're mixing in that red, doing all that stuff and pulling it here and pulling it there. And we're just going all over the place. It's fantastic, right? Just keeping it very light though. Now, all we got to do is based off of our pressure, decide how far you want that darkness to come down and cover that little white area. Really wants to come down and be like, um, hello, we're going to come down and cover this. That's what I'm going to do, right? Really all dependent on our pressure. So start crisscrossing, start pulling that bit of darkness, save it a little bit, right? It doesn't have to be super bright. Of course, as we go back and forth, we're going to be dragging color across the canvas, right? It's just bound to happen, just bound to happen. So, hey, just like that, dragging it down. You could like literally with the amount of pressure, watch us just pull this whole bit of brown down through the sky, right? All up to us, what we want to do with it. Take this bit of red, blend it up. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Maybe leaving just a little light area and we're going to pop a little sun right in there. Just had the thought. Just the thought was like, hey, you know what you should do? Pop a little sun in right there. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go clean this brush off one more time. Then we're going to hit it one more time with our blending. And then we'll be all ready to go. Get down into that waterfall, right? It's going to be a double waterfall painting. If you wanted to buy this painting, it is number 842. So if you go over to my Etsy store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com and search for number 842 in the search bar when you're up there, then you can buy it during the show right now, but kind of reserve it for yourself for later on, right? And then you get to choose the name at the end of the show. If you buy the painting, you get to choose the name and uh, you get to give a shout out to whoever, or you can pick whatever name you want and we'll name it then, right? That's the fun bit. Plus, if you buy it early enough, you get to kind of decide what goes where. Now, we're going to go back in with that same brush we just dried off, back and forth, just crisscrossing, crisscross it just very softly so we don't have any little, uh, like, hard lines or brush strokes or this, that, and the other one. Just got that little light area back there. It's very cool. I'm going to wash that brush off one final time, then we'll get into some clouds and some waterfalls. Guys, it's going to be really neat. going to be awesome. So remember, if you're watching me over on YouTube, hi, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up over there. The more thumbs ups we have, the more it shows it to more people. The more people give more thumbs ups, the more it grows, it goes viral, right? That's how you go viral over on YouTube. Thumbs up and comments. If you're watching over on Facebook, make sure you tap one of those little emojis every once in a while so we see some little faces floating up. And if you're watching over on TikTok, make sure you're just double tapping that screen. And if we can get to 1.1 million likes, that's my like to beat. That's what we got during one show. A one hour show, we had 1.1 million likes. Now, since I forgot to do it, I've got to set my little clock here. Hang on, let's go like this. Bam, zero, zero, cool. Start, just start it. <laughs> Stupid thing, okay, hang on. Now we gotta go back. I know, I, I gotta keep a timer on myself, otherwise I lose track of time and then we do like a three hour show and I don't even know it. There we go, okay. Now we've been painting for about eight minutes, so I put 52 minutes on the clock. We got about 52 minutes left, right? Now, we're gonna come in with our brush, we're gonna go pick up our big old giant palette. You don't have to use a big old giant palette like this. It just makes it easier so I can zoom in, show you guys more closely, different things, right? So we're gonna come in with our white. Actually, let's just load up this fan brush now because we're not gonna use it just yet. Let's put it off to the side. And we're gonna go back and grab a filbert, and a little filbert, right? Over there like that. We're gonna load up this filbert just on one side. We're just gonna pull it through the paint, just on one side of the brush, not even turning it, right? So you got it on that back side, uh, not on the back side, just on the front side. And then we're going to take that bit of front-sided paint. We're going to spin it around so now the paint's pointing at the canvas. And then, boom, we're going to come up here and just push and touch. And then rotate the brush all the way around, right? Pushing hard into the canvas. Float, you know, like really spreading out all of those bits of uh, bristles. They spread out and then you rotate them around. And it makes this awesome little circle back there. Really cool. And if you can do it and just keep it right in the center, you'll make a perfect circle without even trying, guys. It's really neat. All right, now what we're gonna do <clears throat> is go back in with our two-inch brush and we're gonna soften it. So we're gonna go up and down both ways and then side to side, very light low, very light pressure, very light right here. Right, up, down, right, left. Boom, I did those backwards on purpose. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to come over here with that white brush and we don't need too many clouds out in here because we got a lot of trees. We don't want to cover up all these trees, right? And all we did to get these trees, if you're like, how did you get the, 
the gesso, you know, how did you get these trees black and all your crimson on there? I have many videos over on YouTube on my how-to playlist. So if you go to my YouTube page, there's a whole section at the top. It's got videos, um, shorts, live, playlists, membership, all these little tabs along the top. <clears throat> well, if you go over to the playlist and you go to fi the, find the how-to playlist, it'll show you how to put on the clear, how to put on undercolors, how to make your can, you know, how to turn a white canvas to a black canvas, how to do a half and half, how to make the trees like that. I have every video you ever need over on my YouTube. So youtube.com slash paint with Josh and all you guys watching there over on YouTube. I love you. Make sure you give me a thumbs up because we're talking about you guys right now, right? So take that brush like this. Let's come around. Don't want to come in and touch it. Right? And just pop it through there and then watch. Even if we go through the clouds, we'll just blend it so hard that it'll just make it look further away. Bit like that, right up underneath that bit of, of uh, sunlight, right? And again, you don't have to worry about what the clouds look like. And all you guys watching over on TikTok, got another one coming up later right down below here. Maybe the guys over on YouTube can't see it. There's another canvas that looks very similar to this right down here. It's already prepped and ready to go. So, plan on doing a lot of painting this weekend. Let's grab uh, this one inch brush like this. We're gonna come over here. Just very lightly, see how we mix it and just pushed it a little bit harder, a little bit harder until it kind of looked like it went behind the tree, right? And then over here, if we touch it much less, it stays brighter and brighter and brighter. Over here, watch, we can literally push it behind real hard across the tree and have it just disappear, right? Because it's mixing in with all the reds and the oranges and the, uh, not the yellows, but the brown and all that other stuff. Just mixing it up. Maybe we got this sort of vertical cloud. He's coming down like that. Ah, oh, that's cool. That's cool right there. That's a cool little cloud. All depends on our second P of paint with Josh. We've talked about the first P, which is the amount of paint that we put on the brush, right? What's our second P of paint with Josh, guys? I'll give you a follow and a shout out if you can tell me what the second P of paint with Josh is. Right? What's that second P? Pressure says Armand Wildlife. Give you a follow over there. Everybody follow Armand Wildlife is the first person I saw that said pressure is the second P of paint with Josh. Because it all depends. How much are we pushing? on that paint to then blend it all the way out with all those other colors, right? Very cool. Now, I wanted to add a little bit, maybe it came up and round through there, right? And we're gonna allow a little room to have it blend downwards. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we're gonna come back over here, just start popping up these little guys. Maybe one way down there. Oh, he's gonna be like so far away. I mean, you could literally put one down underneath too. Just leave a little bit of space all the way back under there. And what's cool, is if you don't like it, you just blend it all the way out. It's totally fine. All right, we're gonna push hard on the tree. Almost disappears. Over here, very light, so it doesn't disappear, right? Or if you wanted it to, watch. Push, 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 push. Gone. Gone, right? All you gotta do, very neat. You get to decide what it looks like. Take this little guy, start pushing hard on the tree top so it looks like it's behind the tree, right? And then over here, we touch a little less, and a little harder, and a little less, and a little harder, all dependent on what we want it to look like. Every time we're mixing it, it's mixing in with all those colors, all the little red and the brown and the white color that's underneath all those reds and browns, right? Very cool. Right here next to our little, our full moon or our sun or whatever it is. They're very bright, very bright. Well, I can actually use a little bit more brightness back in here, just touching a little bit of the white paint on there, right? Not even trying to make a shape because you don't have to make anything. There is no specific shape for a cloud at all. All right, come in here like this, just push a little harder to kind of get rid of that straight line. Oh, look, <laughs> leave it, not even touching it. That's the best part right there. Because all we did was just blah and then a little randomness, poof, got this awesome little cloud, right? So take our two inch brush, Again, it doesn't matter if we touch our sun a little bit, right? You don't have to be really worried about it. And go from the top to the bottom, just like this, straight up, and then like that, over to the side, bing, bang, boom. You soften everything down, get these really cool things, all these deep, dark colors everywhere. Get that brown corners, really uh, uh, drags your eye right down into here where our waterfall is gonna just spit right out of the forest. It's gonna be really cool. Really cool, you guys. So. Remember to tap that screen. Remember to give me a follow. If you're not subscribed and you're watching over on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. You can join over on YouTube as well. If you join the channel, you pay $7.99 and um, it opens up the door to like 175 other videos that uh, you can't see unless you're a Super Squad member, right? So if you wanna be part of the Super Squad, go over to my YouTube channel and right up at the top where it says subscribe, there's a little button that says join. You click on that, pay YouTube, and then they open up the door and uh, Let's you in to see what's behind there, right? 
Now we're going to come in through our white, just like this. It's the same on Facebook. I've got uh, membership or subscribers on Facebook as well. And it's funny because Facebook and TikTok subscribe means you pay. But on YouTube, subscribes always meant just follow me. You know what I mean? And they had to go make it hard and try to confuse everybody. Here we go. Take our bit of white on the end of the brush, just like that, right? And all we're going to do is we've already predetermined where we want our water to fall. And then everywhere else just sort of mixed it up roughly so it's all random everywhere, right? But here where it's real red is where we want our water to come out of. Now, what's really neat is you can't... I mean, you could, you could just go straight down and it could be like a little, like a little ridge. You're just looking straight at it. And then all of a sudden it just falls over. But I always like to show a little direction of where the water came from. And all you'd have to do is just pull a little to the side before you went down, right? So it's like a little, it's almost like making like a, a number seven. You go, pull it over to the side and then go down, right? So that's what we're going to do right here over this big, thick red street that everybody can see because it's so bright on the camera. So we're going to go back like that. And I'm just going to use the corner to start. So I'm sort of, instead of the brush being flat, I'm tilting the brush in a little bit. So just the corner, right? My little fingertips, just the corner would tip, uh, would touch first. And that's exactly what you want to do. All right, now what we're going to do, is come back over there, make our little seven shape and go straight down. Just like that, right? doesn't have to be like a, I mean, it will. This one's going to be a curving waterfall. But either way, let's stop talking and start painting, Josh. And take the white and come over here like this, make a little seven. Over to the side and down. doesn't have to be crazy. Doesn't have to be this huge thing, right? Look at all the red color that just attached itself to that brush. And we only used half of the front. So let's use that other half. Come over, down again, right? Really neat. The harder you touch the canvas, the more white paint is gonna drop out. And the lighter that you touch it, the less, the more little diamonds in the sky. <laughs> That's what they look like to me. Little shimmering diamonds that are falling down this little waterfall, right? Now we're gonna flip around to the clean, white, fresh side. Go across it again and down. All depends how much you want to do. All up to you, right? Now, as you can see, you guys can probably see on camera. It's hard for me to see up here, but we've laid out that we kind of want our little river to maybe come down and land about right there. And then we're just going to make little horizontal strokes back and forth, side to side, getting longer and longer and longer as we come over here. Just basically pushing a little bit more on the brush, right? Come back in here. Eat it off, pull it to the side, make them very straight though. But you want to have those little differences, a little darker, a little lighter, a little black streak in between there, a little bit brighter, a little pink, a little kind of darkish. And it's, and then all of a sudden we're going to get to the edge and we're just going to go whoosh, rotate right over the sides. It's going to be really cool. You're like, this doesn't look like a waterfall. I should just change the channel name to paint with trust the process, right? That's what we're going to call it. Paint with trust the process. I'm going to pull this guy straight to the side, just softening it out extending it to the right more than to the left, right? Straight over the edge, just like that. Pulling this guy as far over as you want it to be, but I like having the front a little bit longer than the back back there, so don't pull it too far, right? Very neat. Now we can decide in our other one that we're trying to, uh, we're trying to match from last night, number 841, which is still available. It's, it's literally as big as both these canvases put together and, uh, and just a, a little bit wider. It's a big old monster canvas. So we're recreating that on a smaller bit. And again, these ones are available for sale. Go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. That's where you can find it. This one's number 842. So search for 842 if you want the small one. And if you want to pick up the big one, search for 841. Now, just like that, we get to decide what we want to do. So let's fill up a little bit more water. And this is what we did with the other one. I was showing you guys. You can literally come off and go down different direction, different little things, right? This side, we can pull it down. Maybe that's like our main little crasher. So we're going to the side and down, just like that, flinging it down. Again, watch us rotate, come back to the same spot. Now, what if we just turned a little bit, went that way? All right, you can decide, and then you can turn all this into foam, if you uh, mist, if you don't like it all, right? You decide, Go right up onto the edge. See, the water was coming down that way, right? It came to the point just started to fall down, all up to how we do everything, right? This thing back here, you can pull them off, leaving a little bit of light and a little bit of dark in between. Doesn't have to be the biggest thing. There we go, little bit in there, right? And then you can take this guy and literally we can have another waterfall back there. We could put a rock in between. You could have everything fall. It could be so flat up here that it's like a big, big old flat piece of sandstone and the water's only an inch, uh, uh, an inch tall and it's flattening out and falling over everywhere. You can do it however you want, right? You can literally fall out of the side back there. You can fall anywhere. 
whatever we want to do. That's the fun part, right? And then whatever we don't want, we can just mix it up into a little bit of cloud down here into some mist, right? And I'll show you exactly what that will look like. So if we had a bit of white onto our brush, just coming in like that, a little bit of white onto the brush. Say we came down, if there was some water falling down here, I would imagine there would be some splashies, right? It's not a, it's not a, an Olympic diver that's going down and just no, no splash or nothing. So I'm gonna come above my water. This is very important, okay? Don't put your splashes down here and try to save this. Try to save this one little bit of black line in between our two colors, right? They're, but we're all using the same color. It's red and brown all mixed together. It's gonna be all sorts of pink and brown, right? So it's gonna be hard to discern which color is which color if you don't leave some little separators. I call them dark separators. And so that little dark separator right there is gonna be the shadow that's underneath all our red of mist. So I'm gonna come up above that about an inch, right? Go across, watch this. You can literally put it wherever you want. And you're like, oh my God, Josh, the, the, the mist, would, it looks like a, looks like a butterfly. Caca, <laughs> all right? It wouldn't look like that, Josh. Well, of course not. Of course it wouldn't look like that, but we have to leave room for the paint to grow, right? As soon as we start to touch it with our brush, what's gonna happen with that pressure, right? Our P2, it's gonna grow like crazy all the way across the canvas. And you could do it, watch, I'm gonna show you right here. I'm gonna grab up a little bit, I'm gonna push it hard, stretch it all the way across to the edge. All with a little bit more oomph into the canvas, right? Now, if I were to take the same bit and just go very lightly, then we're not gonna go so far. It's not gonna drag all the way everywhere my brush is going. Now, what we need to do is shrink our little dark separator right here, right? So we're gonna start to drag it down. I know sometimes the brush and my hand can both get in the way, but oh, right down there. See it start to shrink and shrink and shrink as we bring the bit of white down and roll it down, roll it down, roll it down. Right? Take this guy over here. The more we mix in, the more hard you push, the softer it'll get, and the more misty it'll happen. Look at that little dark separator down in there. Woo! That's fire. Right there. Somebody. This is like a river of flames. Just a river of flames. That's really cool. We're going to take our little teeny tiny bit of white on our knife, and now below that dark separator, pop in a new little section. Right? You can even take the knife and add little bits of... Uh, ripples and all sorts of things doesn't doesn't really matter it really doesn't hey just like that very cool the more you go over it right the more you mix over it like this the more it'll turn that just like if you were to brush it the more it'll turn your little white into a darker color like that pink very neat guys all right I'm gonna come back very lightly with the two inch brush I'm gonna pull these little white bits so just so it softens it down right look at that little difference back there that's really cool but there's a little bit too big of a gap between those white things. So it looks like a, like a drop, you know what I mean? So let's come in and sort of fill it until it's just a, just a sixteenth of an inch, small little bit. All right now, we don't want all the water to look the same. So let's add a little bit of brightness to it in different places. And then you can go back with your brush and stretch it out, do whatever you want to do. All right now, all depends. We could take these guys and totally make them into a little bit of misty something or other, throw some giant rocks around here. All depends on what you want to do with yours. So let's not get too far down with our water though. We can literally go anywhere that we want to go. Let's come back up in here. We're going to make some really cool rocks out of this stuff, right? Now, all we need to do is mix up a bit of our three favorite dark colors that we like to use. And those dark colors are, guys, can anybody say them in the comments as I'm mixing them up? And then I'll come back and see if you guys are correct. I mix up those dark colors right there. And they make this deep, dark, like it looks black, but it's this really deep, dark purple color. And it's just fantastic for shadows, especially on a deep, dark canvas like this. But don't mix any white into it. Don't add any other bright color, the yellow, nothing. Get very dark. Keep it very, very, very dark. All right, now we'll come over here. Let's see what you guys have said. I'm trying not to knock over all these cameras. You guys are just amazing. Let's see. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? Crimson, black, and blue. There you go. That was it. Raven, that is so Raven right there because you got that totally correct on the first go. Crimson, black, and blue. That's our three favorite colors that we like to grab from and make that dark shadowy mix, right? So we're gonna come back over here, and pull it out flat. See that big difference? You get that giant pile of paint over here. You get this little teeny tiny mushed out flat section. That's so you don't take a giant big glob and glob it up there, right? So 
scrape out like an inch by an inch. You don't get a whole lot on the brush, just a little teeny tiny bit. And let's say we'll come up and who knows, maybe there's like a little bit of rock right back in there. We got to cover over just a touch, just a little flick, just the edge, a little top corner, a little teeniest bit of that waterfall. You got to cover over it. All right, maybe these guys come up here. You start adding little things. I'm not even going to go back and put any branches on that big tree. That's wicked. That's wicked like that. I like to always make it a, a little jaggedy too. You never want to have it just be this perfect thing. And look at how all this darkness blocks out any bit of light that tried to sneak its way over there, right? So we'll come back in again. A couple little flat areas, little dark areas, little here, little there, little jagged, little jagged little pill like Alanis Morissette, just wherever. Just wherever. Pull it down, you get all this dark back there, right? Very cool. Then you can go back in with your one inch brush. It's a whole lot like this. These, these one inch brushes need a trim. They need a haircut, just like me. That's why I'm wearing my hat today. So I need a haircut so bad. And we're gonna pull this guy down. And we don't wanna cover over all the mist, right? But we do wanna soften the bit of paint so it's not the same texture as the uh, knife when we mushed it up there. If you just soften it, the littlest touch, right? You get these little, kind of grooves that your brush is dragging through. You're dragging through all these little grooves. And then when you go across it with your palette knife, all those little grooves are gonna pick up paint in different random places. It's gonna look really cool. So let's come in. I'm gonna try to stay away from the three yellow colors and not use those. So let's get a bit of white and a bit of our two brown colors. We're gonna mix these guys up and see what we can kind of sort of create as a rocky color, right? Of course, we don't want it to be all the same brown. So the more and more and more we mix it, the more it's all gonna turn into that same nasty color, right? Let's go back in here and maybe say there might've been a little light right off the top over there, right? Just pulling it. And as we just very lightly graze over it, it's gonna pick it up in different places and it's just gonna be awesome, guys, right? Gotta leave a couple little dark areas here and there in between. You don't have to cover every bit. You don't have to see every single thing, right? Plus we're looking into the sun, we're like this. Like, I can't see the top of those rocks looking right into the brightest light around, right? The sun. So now watch, we're gonna come over here. I gotta sort of try to, there we go, okay, I can see it and I'm not in your guys' way, that's good. Now I'm gonna come over here, we're gonna change the angle, start pulling it down this way. Drop a little bit off the side. It doesn't have to be the brightest thing. And look, just right there by going side to side, you've almost created this little flat area. And then if you just very, just lightly, just pull straight down and leave that little space in between, look, look at how cool that looks, right? That's just so neat. It's so neat what you can do. And if you don't go all the way down into your mist, then you don't cover it all, then you don't have to go back and, and uh, add your mist again. Now, here's where our third P of Paint with Josh comes into play, right? We've talked about P number one, the amount of paint that we put on the brush, right? Or in the sky or on the canvas or whatever. P number two, the amount of pressure that we push, right? How far do you want it to grow? We showed you over here, you can really make it grow all the way off the canvas, right? But what's that third P of Paint with Josh? Because that's what you really need for this next step. You really got to have that third P. Pressure says Tracy Bias, giving you a follow over here on TikTok for pressure. Uh, practice, sorry. Practice, I can't even read. So we're going to go over here with a lot, uh, with a very small amount of pressure, as she was saying. It's very correct. Very small amount of pressure. But you also need a very large amount of practice doing that very small amount of pressure to go over the paint so lightly in those same little ways that we did it with our knife, just to soften it down and extend it the teeniest, tiniest bit, right? It's gonna help it dry like two hours faster, I swear. And it does help. It does help make it dry, but it's not gonna be, you know, oils take forever to dry. And look at that jagged bit right there where you can't even see off the back. It's so pitch black back here, you can't even see it. That's cool. That is eat. <laughs> Okay, let's go back over here. We still have all this deep darkness. So we'll come on to this side and we're gonna come up. See how I'm, I'm, I'm basically the same angle as our water right here. Cause you gotta go up and cover over where you came from, right? We can still see a little bit of directional pull that way. And then the brush changed and went down. That's exactly what you wanna have because it shows the movement of the water, where it came from, instead of just all of a sudden, poof, it was right there. You know what I mean? If we pull down very long, just like, sideways like that you get these little stalactites start hanging down off of that stuff so cool it all depends on what you want yours to look like and i always how many times have i said that so far like 19 times somebody that should be somebody's job keep an over under on how many times josh says right because i say right a lot i know i hear it 
<laughs> and I try to edit it out nowadays in some of the videos. I'm like, yeah, you know, right? No, no, yeah, right. We'll go up here, right? Let's go over here, right? Like, how many times can you say right, Josh? Please stop saying right. A little itch over here. There we go. So we're going to take up that dark paint again, scraping it up, come up into here, sort of matching our old things. Because I don't want to have, uh, I don't want to have to, you know, continually add paint. That's why we had it all black. I knew where my little uh, horizon line was going to be and what everything was going to look like already based off our black gesso. And again, if you want to know how to make your canvas look black like this with those faded trees, you have to go watch the video on YouTube. It's in the how to playlist over on my YouTube. And it's called how to, you know, make trees with black gesso or how to cover your canvas in black gesso. I use this Liquitex stuff. It's so awesome. Liquitex black gesso. It's really cool. Okay, we're going to take that same very dark brush that we were using. See, we only use the one side. It's very clean on that side, very dark on this side. Let's keep using the same side at least. And just so lightly again, because if you pull it, you guys all know with our pressure, pff, all that dark goes straight through all that light color and it'd just be a mess. But if we're just very light, we can soften the paint. Right, creating our little channels and our little bits, however we want, softening it, softening it, softening it. And that way, when we come across it with our random bit of color, it'll grab in random places just like that. Man, you guys are going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Because I am out of breath. I need a drink like so bad. So let's come back here. We'll give some shout outs. Where are you guys watching from? And we'll see what we can see. Let's see what we see. Yeah, thank you guys all for watching over on YouTube. Give me a uh, give me a thumbs up over there, and um, let's see. Maybe I can get you to uh, zoom in a little bit over on YouTube. There we go. Now that we're done with the sky, we can zoom in a little. Let's see, guys. Where are we watching from? Pop, 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 pop. Oh yeah, definitely, Sophia. You got to give me a follow. Thank you for the little hand heart thing over on TikTok. We're simulcasting to Facebook. YouTube and TikTok all at the same time from three different devices. We got people on TikTok from West Virginia, Connecticut, California, Jessica, uh, Florida, but from Jessica, uh, St. Pete, Florida, Australia, Oregon, California, Ottawa, Canada. Watching from Darien, Georgia over here on Facebook. From Reno and Pennsylvania and Colorado and Georgia. Still Trill Media says fire over there on YouTube. We got Oklahoma over on YouTube. Uh, people in the Philippines over on TikTok. Man, we have Thomas Walls here watching. My goodness. We got all the celebrities, and I didn't even take a drink that whole time. I was like, let me pause so I can take a drink, and I never took a drink. Mm. Oh, yeah. Just a little Dr. Pepper. Oh, get your mind right. <laughs> a little DP, right? There we go. Now, we're going to come in here, go back to that same color. So let's grab a little bit of our browns, a little scrape of white, kind of match what we had just done. It's not going to be perfect, right? Take a little bit of that dark and put it in there as well. That way it'll try to change it up a bit. And maybe a little bit darker of our darker brown. Look at all those different things. Look at all those colors. Just amazing. All these colors in here. So we'll go scrape through that color. And then on this guy, all of our light's going to be coming from the same bit, right? So we're going to come over here, very lightly, pull it down. Just a small little thing. Doesn't have to be perfectly high lit, right? Just like that. Leave a dark area. It doesn't all have to be lit. I'm telling you from experience, I've done it so many times where I've put way too much paint on it and it starts looking really cool. And then you're like, ooh, it would look neater if I did more. And it would look cooler if I did more. It would look more awesome if I did more and more and more. And then oh, you put too much paint on the canvas, right? And way too much and covered up all of our dark areas. So leave little disconnections between the colors and the darkness. Right? Just like that. Very neat. To make the, the most wickedest little rock you ever done did see. Just like that. By just going in different directions, adding a little bit of paint. Maybe pulling it down over here, sliding it back over there. Very, very, very light pressure when you're using a palette knife, though. Very light pressure. And then even lighter pressure when we come in with our brush, just so we don't move that paint. And then you do it in the same direction that you did with your palette knife. So you go change, you go back and forth. Right, that guy got a little dark way down here, but it's okay because all the sun is way back there. But if you wanted to, just in case, because I don't care where the sun is, I like to show lots of details. Oh, oh yes. Looks like a, like a melting heart, you know, like a human heart. It's like melting right down into the thing. It's got some weird jagged like growths on the side of it. There we go. Come into here. Bang. Little touch. 
A little over there, a little over there. All depends on what, who wants? You, all depends on what you want it to look like. I always say that. All right, now we're gonna come in from the bottom here. Maybe we could get a little bit of that light color to drag upwards or very lightly mix up around our little stalactites, just like that, very cool. Very cool. Now, last little thing for the waterfall is, back there anyway, is we gotta come back with a little bit of upfront splashies, right? So we're gonna come back lower to our dark separator this time and stay above it, stay in between these bits. And then even lighter pressure, guys. Right, remember we had to, we used pressure to mix up all of our bit of mist, so even more lightly. And then that guy will look like it's in front of the rest of that mist, like a little rounded curve to it, just because we did it much lighter and we've got that darker, more mixed up stuff off in the background. Right? Very cool. Very cool. You know what's another fun thing to do? When you just do an awesome little painting and then you go get some liquid white on the little tip of our fan brush, just like that, come out here on the corner, throw it out like that, and all we need is just a little, a couple little flicks. A couple little things. Don't need to see a whole lot, right? And then we can go, always go back in and mix up whatever we don't like by pulling them straight out like this and get rid of them. So all the ones that come down here accidentally, it's okay. They're like little pearls, they're little bits of sunshine. And walking on sunshine. Very cool. Just like that, guys, very neat. So, again, all depends on what you wanna do. Now that we're done with our background back there, we can decide, maybe there was a bit of like, I don't know, like a, let's call it like a big old gigantic bush, right? With that same bit of dark paint. And we come into here, just like this, and we come over to the side and we just start popping up. Gotta get a little bit on the same level as the rock, maybe a little bit up, just have a couple little bits just kind of pop out, right? Almost looks exactly like the rock did initially, but we can see up close that we've got all these little textury bits. Now, maybe a little thing came down like this. It just started to hang over the side, right? Gotta have them all connected. Can't look like different fingers hanging down over the side like that. I have them all be connected, maybe down underneath our rock, had another little bit start to grow and just like drip down. And then we're gonna go back over and cover it. And man, it's gonna look cool. Holy moly, it's gonna look neat. Especially because we already have that bit of darker red back there, a bit of our mist, so it's gonna give it that 3D feel to it. Really cool. Really, really cool. Now what we have to decide is what we wanna do over on this side, right? And the other one, we made a face. Literally made a silhouette of a, of a like a, it almost looked like the BFG. <laughs> silhouette of a face over there in the rocks. And uh, it turned out really cool. But with this one, I think we're gonna just try to, make, try to connect from back here and drag them around the front, right? So, I'm gonna show you how to do that with a fan brush or our palette knife, it doesn't matter, right? A lot of people have problems with the palette knife, so we try to do it with the fan brush a lot, but I always say, if you're struggling with it, force yourself to use it. I never knew how to use these things, uh, the Bob Ross versions anyway, right? I always had the, the little cheap plastic one that you get from Michaels in the beginner set. That's what I loved using because it was so much easier for me, and then I was like, Josh, you have to learn how to use the proper tool, right? Come on, don't be afraid of it. So let's come back. I gotta try to get in front of you guys a smidge. Right? I guess we could probably do a little face if we tried hard enough. Came down. No, I don't want to. There we go. A little bit over here. Like that. All we gotta do is make it dark, right? Make it dark, covering over everything that's back there. And then we're gonna come out, we're gonna come down here pop up into our bit of thing. I see how we changed the, the angle of the knife and started pulling it down that way now. And eventually we'll cover over all this with our brush, get rid of all the light color behind there. Now it looks like we could literally like Gollum. We could walk up the edge, climb onto the, the top of this waterfall up there. Maybe this is the forbidden pool. Now, again, here was, here's where we decide, right? So if this painting was to be purchased, and I don't know if it has been, whenever I'm doing all three shows at once, I, I can't, there's nothing to tell me that it's gone off and and then I've gotten a sale. So I want to put this giant, no, that's exactly what we're going to do. We can't have, I mean, we could, we could have a little bit. Okay. We'll do a little bit, just a little bit. We're going to put this guy in like that. We're going to have a little sneaker of a bit of water sneaking out in between these bits of rocks over here. Right. And all we're doing is just making this little jagged thing. We're going to end up throwing these crazy bits off of it anyway. So before we do that, let's come over here, grab up a little bit of white, 
right? Got to finish off our waterfall down here. So maybe, hmm, hmm. <laughs> there's so many things we could do back there. So many things we could do. I could put another rock right here. I could do so many little bits. Let's do that. Okay. Let's come back in like this. Very light because I don't want to have it be very bright, right? It's further away. It's got to be lighter. Very soft amount of pressure. Taking the top, sliding it back. So we have a couple little bits of bright white back there, right? Just like that. Leaving this darkness on purpose because oh, right there, that last little touch of white right before it falls over the top, that's exactly what you want to have. And that's what you want to slide back to the edge, right? Boom, just like that. Now, we're going to put that other rock in there, and then we've got to pop up into that bit of light color. So that's why we're leaving it sort of dark. You don't want to have to cover over all of it if it's all bright white, right? Now we're going to come in here like this. Again, grabbing this guy. A little bit more paint, a little bit more pressure. Change the angle. I'm going to come down. All depends on what we want it to look like, right? This guy, we can come over here. And then grow down. All depends. It's a little bit of water sneaking out that guy. And then, of course, they would sort of match up, you would imagine, maybe down here, but a little bit of paint so it doesn't look like, you know, <laughs> perfect. But it's got to have a little paint out there. Just a touch. Now we're going to come back in, fill in our little rock onto this side so we'll have this whole crazy thing. I mean, you could even cut across that. Guys, that would be really cool. That would be really cool. Let's add a little bit more of our paint back in there. And then I'm gonna come up from the bottom, just in case we're gonna add a little bit of misty stuff. All right, just a little mixer up here. Catalina wine mixer, right over there. Just mix it up, all nuts, right? And then we're gonna come back with the two inch brush and, or the one inch brush, whatever you want. I'm gonna, just gonna to start to get a little of that mist rocking and rolling, not trying to touch our waterfall bits. Cause as soon as you touch, oh, that looks like a cave to like, H-E double hockey sticks, guys. This is a cave down to heck down there. There we go. Just the more we mix it, the more it's going to mix with the crimson and the reds and the brown and everything, right? And then we can drag and we can decide what bit of mist, how much of the color, all up to us. Get this little mistiness. It's very much like a land before time type of uh, misty, crazy bit of prehistoric landscape, something like that. Some sort of nuts thing like that. We're gonna take a little bit of that same color. We're gonna mix up some more black, crimson, and blue, favorite colors. I can literally do a painting with just crimson, black, blue, and white. It's one of my favorite uh, limited palettes to do. So, come in like that, a little bit of that darkness, right? Kind of pop up into our bit of water back in there. So we push a little bit of that back. Maybe it came out over here, very spiky. Very spiky little bit. Now, just like that, we filled it in, right? You can go up and higher if you want to. Just don't go too crazy, right? Don't go friggin' nuts. You don't have to go nuts on it. There we go. Just like that. Crazy looking little rock. It's why the river is being forced away from itself, right? And then this guy, we could literally, you could cut him off. You could come down here. We could make this guy a bit longer, a bit darker. Kind of pull him down. All depends on what we want it to look like. How many times? That's like 3,900 times. I've said that now in this stream so far. Pulling up from the bottom, get that little bit of mistiness. A little bit of mistiness and some action, right? Maybe it falls all the way off into nothing and we don't know what's happening, or I'm going to throw a little bit of water. You guys let me know what you want to see. You want to have it just like this, where it's falling off into the abyss? Nothing, we don't know what's going on back there. Or should we have a little pond at the bottom? And while you guys are deciding on that and debating, I'm going to go back and add a little bit more of our deep, dark color. And just like this, I really want to, I know I already did it. I really want to come up and just jagged that guy right there. Just like we can literally just walk out, start climbing right up this thing. Really cool. Really cool. At least there's no pond over on this side now. You guys took too long. No, I knew I was going to do this already. I knew I was going to do it already. There we go. Very neat. Little dark bits all pulling back in the same direction going this way. So what do you guys want to see? Let's see, mist, pond, mist. We got rocks, we got pond, pond. Let's see, it should be named after Technoblade 7. Yeah, guys, start coming up with a name for this painting. Remember, if you wanna name it, you gotta start typing it into the comments. A lot of people wanna see a pond, a lot of people wanna see some mist. 
Cosmic Lighthouse. Was that Cosmic Lighthouse that said mist? The abyss. I know, right? It's such a cool thing. So especially if you leave, so let's say you did the pond, right? All you have to do, just like we did up here, you pull it back and forth, side to side, just very, very small on the bottom. All you need is like a little half inch, a little bit of brightness down on the bottom. That's it, pulling it side to side. Now, for us though, right? And then you'll be done. Be totally done with the thing. You can go back and highlight your little rocks and be totally fine, right? But for us, we're going to get crazy. Let's come up. We've got our big old flowers over here. Well, let's decide. Maybe our bit of rocks and everything came out. Maybe we hung down over the edge, just right over there, right in the front. All of this stuff gets covered, right? And then whatever little mist that we allow to show through is gonna be really cool. Look at this guy. Little things just hanging out there. All depends how much you cover it, how much paint's on your knife, how much you're pulling it down, get all these little cool little bits. All right, now we're gonna turn the angle of the knife, scrape up the last little bit, turn our angle this way, right? Before we're going like this, we're just trying to use the flat side. Now I'm going to try to turn that flat side this way and just start going up with it. Creeping up into that misty bit of fogginess, right? And that way, you've got all these sharp little things. All these things we can highlight, throw different shadows on. Very cool. And they don't all have to go the same way either, right? You can do all sorts of stuff. What do you want yours to look like? Totally up to you. Do you want to leave it all the way open? Where you have an opening where you can see the bottom? Do you want to cover it all? Again, totally up to you. I think I'm gonna cover it all. Because on the other one, we did a pond and we left it all over. You can see the whole pond at the bit. And this one, I gotta have just one more little piece of, of depth and distance back in there just by connecting these guys. Smallest little bit, right? Just put a little bit of rock, a little bit of darkness. Just make sure it's very thick and very dark and that way it blocks out all the color behind it. Very cool. Now we're gonna come back and highlight all these little things using even less paint than all this darkness, right? You think it's hard to highlight the rock, when in fact, we're actually using less paint than we're using right here to make it dark. And again, very lightly, just pulling out the smallest little bit. I think I retained the face right there. He's gonna have a big old Pinocchio nose, but that's what it's gonna be. There we go. Pulling down to the side, because that's what we did. All we did, trying to feed all that darkness to cover up any bit of light that we had. Right down here, pulling it to the side. Maybe slightest bit up. Maybe, right? You get these little teeny tiny drag marks out there. All depends. Now, this guy, we were going this way. Then this guy, we were going that way. And then this guy, we were going this way. And we were filling it all back, back in there like that. Not trying to really pull it. Just trying to go over it enough to soften it down. That's really cool. A little bit of different color back there. You can't see any mist behind this guy, right? And then all of a sudden, woo, that's neat. I wonder, oh man, what if we did like another canvas below it where we it was all just a black canvas and then we do a, at the top of that black canvas, you put another bit of, oh guys, we might have to do that. We might have to do that and sell them as a pair. That'd be really cool. That'd be really cool. Yeah, that's for a different painting though. Okay, that's for another time. That's for another time. But what if, you know, what happened to my knife? fell down, almost stabbed me in the toe. You know what I mean? Like what if there was a ridge of rock right here and then it was just like a deeper, darker cave with more mist and more pools. Maybe the water hits and falls like three, four, five more times. That's kind of neat. It's a cool idea anyway, to see what would happen, right? So a little bit of our brown and white, just a touch, a little crimson in there this time, just to change it up from the rest. And right, scrape down to the very bottom. That's where the white likes to hang. And then you go to scrape it, and the first thing you put on is this bright, white, snowy-looking thing. You're like, whoa, it's, it's not winter. I wasn't trying to do snow yet. Okay, let's come back over here. Come down just very lightly, different areas, right? You go back over there, come out onto the front of this guy. Very cool. Just little things, little bits. And then we'll see, maybe we've kind of made a little face out there. He's got like a a mask on, but he's got a little face. Okay, now, out there, gonna pull off to the side, pull it up. You don't have to connect the two bits, right? We know it's all one big piece. This one's actually right out in the front, much closer to us than the other one. So let's try to keep a little bit of that straight up dark right at the very bottom. It just helps it, look at that. Just helps it look a little bit more round, a little bit more deep when it's nice and dark right down there at the bottom. And then maybe we put a little dark slit right in here and that'll be his lips. Oh yes. I mean, he's got a Pinocchio nose, but 
the lips, they, they don't look bad. And then a little eyeball, just straight up black, bringing it very dark. Very dark over there. That's cool. All right, very neat. Now we'll come back over here and we're gonna disconnect from the face, go a different angle so it cannot be construed as part of it. And that way it stands out as, hey, that's a face right there. See what I mean? Come in here, not try to cover up all the black or the deep dark purple, whatever we had, whatever color you ended up making, right? Not trying to cover it all. So leave little separations in between, even if they're just a, a 16th or a 32nd of an inch or just as big as a, as a human hair, just leave them in there. You don't have to cover everything. You don't want your whole bit to be brown and you have no depth. You know what that, all that dark color is? Depth, distance, details. All right, come over here very lightly, just touching it randomly. And then whatever stays on there, stays on there. <laughs> just like that. So cool. So easy. Over here, little couple things. Separate the color. Don't have it all touch. Bam. Dunzo. Bingo. Bongo. Now we'll come over to this side. And we only got our, let's do our big bush. You guys forgot all about these flowers up here in the top, didn't you? Didn't you? You did. You already forgot about them. So since we said we were going to keep it a limited palette painting, we're only going to use red and crimson and brown and brown and blue, black and uh, white, right? So can't go with our pretty bright yellows, which would look awesome, or like orange, which would look really awesome as well. We're going to make up some very cool little pinky reds and stuff. But just straight off the bat, we're going to wash off the brush and it's sort of far away, so we don't really have to go super thick texture. It doesn't really have to be seen too terribly bad. But I'm going to grab a little of our straight up crimson, just bouncing it into the pile. So we've got a little chunkiness on here. And then we're going to come test it out. I'm like, okay, I need a little bit more paint because it's not coming off chunky enough. There we go. A couple little chunk bits back in there, right? And all that's going to do is when we brighten up this crimson, those little darker, chunkier crimsony bits are going to pull off the brighter crimson bits, and they're gonna look like shadows. Crimson or red or whatever color we decide to go with, right? Dab it off our brush. Now, come back over here. Let's go into that red since we already used it anyway with the sky. Dabbing it in there like that. It's just almost so you get like a big thick glob, and then you go touch it very softly, just, just to drop off a couple little bits, right? If you touch it too hard or you mush it on there with too much of this thick paint, done, gone, say goodbye to all your depth, all your details. It's mushed on there and it's forever lost, right? And look, even though we had a ton of red paint on there, just touching it is transferring all that darkness onto the brush. And when that happens, it's not gonna come off. So let's try to get a last few little bits of that red just to pop off over there, right? And again, don't try to cover all the dark, right? We have all that scraggly bit. Those are our shadows, don't cover all those. You need them. And that's why we put them up there. You can't just go up there with straight up red if there's nothing dark underneath it. You don't have any depth, right? It's like the, the one thing I try to always say or get across is if we were just to go up there with just the red and not have any of those, our dark mushy stuff or our dark crimson or anything, just a straight up bright red, it's not gonna look like it has any depth. It's gonna be very flat because there's no shadows. There's no difference in color, right? Gotta have them very lightly because we don't want to smush it. You gotta leave some dark areas in there. Can't have them all be bright red, right? And then a couple little bits here and there as they start falling off and hanging down as far as you want to go. Totally up to us what we do. Totally up to us. You can have it grow all the way down to the bottom if you wanted but you'd have to go back and prep it with that darker color shadow first. Always gotta have the darkness underneath it before you put the light. We always have some darkness before we see the light, right? Now, this bit, we sort of came over our bit of rocks, which I didn't wanna do. So what I'm gonna do is scrape away that bit of red and we just took it right off, mixed it in with all that stuff over there and come back with our brown color and I'm gonna come back in start to light up just little things and then oh just the teeniest tiniest little touch right leaving a lot of deep darkness in there you don't even have to connect the bright areas not everywhere is going to be super high lit right a little back in there just so it's not a straight line Woo! it's like a it's like a little crab pincer claw or something over there 
coming from the upside down. That's what it looks like. There we go. Now I'm going to rotate the brush, not try to cover up all of the dark on every one of these guys, right? Even those very thin little flicks all the way out to the end, you can only cover half the dark. Don't cover it all. Oh, I say it all the time. Don't cover it all. You have to leave them, right? This is a very shadowy night. Well, not nighttime, but it's getting to be nighttime, right? And you don't have to show every single detail of every single thing in the brightness. It doesn't all have to take place in the light. Lots of dark areas, especially in sunset scenes. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You know what I mean? There's people, I get people in the comments all the time that go, oh, I've never seen a sunset that looks like that. First, we don't paint realism, so no big deal. Uh, you can make your sunset be freaking green if you wanted it to be or uh, uh, purple, whatever. You can have it be whatever you want. It's totally up to you. See these little differences that we're pulling at? And all that paint is randomly picking up little bits of our brightness because we had softened it down. Now, over here, what we were going like this, and then we were going like that, so let's go back like this. Just shaking the knife very lightly, pulling it off. Put a, put a fork in this one, it's done. Or is it put a pin in it? I can't remember. Put something in this one, because it is finished, guys. Remember, if you want to buy this painting, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, search for number 842, and that'll pull up this listing right here. Gorgeous. Now, I think it's like $213, if I remember right, and uh, we're not even completely done yet. We still got four minutes left of the show, and I'm gonna show you something. Just sit back and relax, All right? So, if you wanna buy this painting, Go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, and then this is going to be fantastic. You guys have no idea what's about to pop out. Whew. There's no clue. So unless you were watching last night's uh, TikTok stream, then you do have a clue of what's coming. And it's a big old bravery test. So if you want to stop at this point and go, okay, I'm done with the tutorial. I don't have to do it. Remember, guys, all you guys watching over on Facebook and over on, uh, over on TikTok, we're doing a YouTube tutorial for this. So... You'll be able to go over, watch it step by step. You can see every single thing that we're doing, every color that we're mixing, every bit that we scrape up and put down. You can all go rewatch it over on TikTok, uh, over on YouTube. Sorry, not on TikTok. Over on YouTube. Now, I'm going to get a very thin, that's actually not, look at that. That brush is like very wide at the end. It's like split apart, right? So let's go get a brand new one. Just a brand new, look at how clean these Gak Doctor brushes are when they're brand new, right? Brand spanking Gak Doctor fan brush. You're like, what's Gak Doctor? G A C D R. Gak Doctor. There's no, there's no other way to explain it besides Gak Doctor, right? Look at that little face coming out of the rocks on the right, you guys. That's cool. That's cool. So, again, we're going to be doing another version of this painting right here, down here, in probably about an hour or so, whenever we finish. About an hour after that. Now, very lightly through this dark color. Right? Oh, so lightly, because we don't need to load up the entire brush all the way up to the, the brand new shiny squeezy bit, whatever this piece is called. I always forget what this piece is called. So we always we don't need to fill it up all the way to the squeezy bit, right? And then we'll have too much paint on the brush if we do that. So come up here. Let's decide. We need a big old monster tree. And when you need a monster tree, they call it a bravery test. We're going to touch it very lightly up here. Right, very lightly, maybe right below the sun. And the lighter you touch it, the thinner it stays. And then the more that we come down, the more we touch. A little bit more pressure, more pressure, more pressure, more pressure, full pressure, boom, bending the, all the bristles of the, can, uh, of the brush straight down into our little dark pile. Come back in, reload it, basically flattening all those bristles back down again so it's a little sharp little bit. And we're gonna come up and go a little bit taller with it actually, because Josh just wants to get crazy tonight. And go straight through. There we go, right down in. Push it a little harder as we go, right? Just trying to make it this little gradient where it's it's a little thicker and a little thicker and a little thicker and a little thicker until we get to the bottom. Very neat. Now it's all gonna depend on how we highlight the thing, right? What are we doing? How are we gonna put the brown on? What's it gonna look like? How many branches are we gonna give it? You know what I mean? All depends. You can have a super branchy little tree that's hanging out there. You could put a bunch of foliage on it and cover up all of our sky and all the background. And do, you know, whatever you want. That's not what I'm going to do. But you can do whatever you want to do. 
because it's your painting that we're trying to paint, right? It's not my painting. This is painting number 842. It doesn't matter when you get to number 842. It really doesn't anymore. All right, now we're gonna come back in that same brown, right? We're all using this, this limited palette. We can even make it a bit brighter. A little bit of our white, change up the color just a bit, right? And then we can go back in and add a little bit more. Because I always say, guys, as I've said, like the fourth or fifth, oh, I got paint on my lip somehow. The fourth or fifth or sixth time I've said it in the show, we can always add more. You can't what? Let me give you a shout out to whoever says it first. Let's see. Take it away, Victoria Fadden. You're getting a follow from Paint with Josh for knowing you can always add more, right? So we can always add more white. We can always add more brown. But once you put on too much, then it is no longer that color that you liked anymore. Uh-oh. Fire on! <laughs> it's not a fire alarm. It's my timer, right? I told you guys, an hour-long show. That was it. Now I'm giving you some extra time here. Just trying to mix up that right color, right? Now, go back in there. Scrape up a teeny tiny bit. And the heck? it's kind of hard to decide which side to go on with our light. I guess we'll have to go on the left side. So just tapping in, tap and touch and move. Tap, pull it away and go up a little bit. Right? Each time you do, you're going to add that little bit of our brownish, reddish looking paint. And then once we get up to the tippy top of the whole tree, right? you don't need to have it way up there. I'm only ever touching it about up to here just because it's hard to keep it you know high lit and then shadowed on the one side so on this side we might actually be able to do it if we can get a thin enough little line come back up here and just line it up just right there we go and then we'll have a little bit of brightness right through the top very cool now, you don't have to do it like that. I usually leave the tops dark because especially if we're looking up right at the sunlight, we're not gonna be able to see all the color on there, right? I'm not gonna be able to see it anyway. Okay, now again, I'm gonna stay on the left side of the tree. I'm just gonna hold the uh, thing like this so you guys can see it. We're not gonna try to cover the whole tree. See, we have a little bit of dark line on this side, that little dark separator, and a bigger, slightly bigger dark line on that side. That makes our tree look round. Don't cover it all, man. Don't cover it all. Keep the dark separator in between. Got to, very cool. Okay, now let's come back in. We're gonna go into our odorless mineral spirits or your paint thinner or your brush cleaner or your whatever you're using. Baby oil I've heard you can use. Lots of people use different stuff. And we're gonna come over there. It's just gonna be a very wet, runny paint. And then we're going to try to stay out of our thick areas of our mountain top, right? We're going to go into the areas that are light, like maybe down here, staying in that light color, right? And that way it doesn't change the color of the branch. It stays, you know, makes it look like it's popped out right here in the foreground with us nice and dark. Up here, let's go back through, kind of skip the nose over there, back into that light. Again, makes it look darker. The darker you can keep the paint, the better. All right, come off of this guy, very light pressure, little difference, maybe from the top, a little guy off the top up there, just the teeniest, tiniest little flick. Because that's all that came off the brush. There we go. Off to the side and go up and around the moon or right through it. Just right, why not? Just right through it. All right, we can almost make it look like it's gripping it. It's got a couple little fingers just gripping the moon like that. It's holding it. It's like the photographer's perfect shot, right? And you're like, oh, I'm right here in the, at the exact spot where I need to be at the right time and that perfect shot. Very cool. Doesn't have to be the most crazy thing that you've ever done. Don't have to have all these crazy branches or any little bit like that, right? All in, how do you want it to look? Because that's what I always say. What do you think? All right, maybe we had a guy come down this way. Sort of through our little bit of waterfall. You can go through the water because it's not so thick, right? But just be careful. It's going to start to try to change the color of our branch to a dark, uh, to a much brighter color because you're mixing it with that white, right? And that's not necessarily what we want to do sometimes. Little bits. Gotta have that thinner on your brush, otherwise it won't come off. 
And I like putting a lot of little baby branches that never grew. You know what I mean? You grow out a little bit, they got snapped off. And then my favorite branch, everybody, everybody, anybody's watching, they know my favorite branch to paint is this guy that you start in the middle of the tree at a downward angle, just slide it right out. And that makes it look like it's poking right out here into the tree. Because every time I'm walking through the forest, I swear, I'm not lying, I swear, I'll, I'll get jabbed by one of those guys in my arm or my side or something. Ugh. My, my worst brush, uh, my worst branch, but my favorite one to paint. So, just like that, you guys. Wicked. Just wicked cool. Awesome little painting. So, before we wash off that brush, let's go get the last little bit of our thinner and go back and make our birds. Gotta make the birds. The birds. The birds represent myself, London, and our daughter, Bailey, and they go into every single painting as part of the signature. It's the, literally the, the best shout out you could possibly give somebody to have in every single painting a bit of you represented in each one, right? I think anyway, kinda cool. So a lot of people agree. I've been doing it ever since the beginning and all you gotta do is make a couple little birds flying off there in the sky. They're coming out. Flair were like, oh, they saw this waterfall. They were like, oh, no, no, there's nothing there we need. We're getting out of here. Get out of here. This looks spooky. Right? So, excellent. Excellent. Now, if you're wondering who London is, right? London is my ex-wife, my best friend still. Uh, nothing bad about the breakup. Nothing like that. Help each other out. She comes to watch my animals. I go and watch her animals. You guys know. We always break for the shows, and then we go over there. Well, luckily today... I already went over there and feed, uh, fed the animals and stuff, and London's back in town, so we don't have to go over there tonight, and we can knock out another painting a little quicker than having the downtime in between, right? So, yeah, me, London, Bailey, every single, single painting that there ever is. I think there's like four paintings, maybe, in Paint With Josh history that don't have those birds in it, and uh, those are going to be the valuable ones when it comes down to it. Which one doesn't have the birds, right? So... But yeah, I've always done it as like a tribute to them. You know what I mean? They've been by my side. They've been by my back. Like London used to, London was the only one that watched my videos in the beginning. When I very first started painting, she's the only one watching my stuff. Because she was my wife, of course. Of course she's going to watch my stuff. All right, let's do the support. And without London, guys, seriously, without London, there would be no paint. I wouldn't be here. She bought me the paints. She bought me all the brushes. She gave me the free time and was like, do it. Like, try. You know? And then once I started getting good, she was like, keep going. What are you doing? And I was like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do it. We got this, right? So without London, there would literally not be paint with Josh at all. Like there wouldn't, I would not be here. Um, I wouldn't, the whole circumstance would be totally different if we had not got that, the, those paints for my very first, uh, for my birthday that one year and the very first paint set and brush set that we got, ah. Oh. Then four years later, here we are, right? It's crazy, crazy. So thank you, London, I love you. We always love you. Everybody loves London. And let's finish scraping this up just like this. Bam, 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 bam. There we go, get rid of all that color and then we'll come back and have a clean palette for our next painting. Almost used every single bit of our white paint too. It's okay, we got more. We got more in the thing. So start coming up with a name, guys. What do you want to name this painting? And you can get a shout out, especially if it hasn't been purchased. Some of the times it gets purchased during the show and then the buyer will pick out the name. They go, I want it to be called this. And I'm like, cool, perfect. Then I don't have to pick, right? And uh, sometimes they'll give you a shout out or sometimes not. But if I get to choose the title, then I'll tell everybody to follow your screen name and, and uh, you know, have a lot of a lot of fun. Maybe you get a couple extra followers out of it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> a shoulder shrug. I don't know. So, let's come over here. I'm going to wipe off this palette and then we'll be ready to read some titles. So, what do you got for a title for this painting, guys? If you were going to title this painting, let me see what the title would be. Because I, I just, I, you know, it's so hard to name paintings anymore after naming so many. All right. So, let's see some titles, guys. You got titles over on YouTube and Facebook and and everywhere else. Thank you for all the thumbs ups, guys. You're amazing over on YouTube. Let's see, everybody on Facebook's looking wicked. Let's see, happy little mistake, right? 
There we go. Loving it, loving it. Okay, Fowl of Fire, Forbidden Pool. Let's see here. Fire Falls. Ooh, that's wicked. Deep Serenity, Hell's Falls, Chasm of Doom. I like that one. I like Chasm of Doom by Guara the Explorer. You're going to get a follow from Paint with Josh just because. Uh, now, you know what? That's it. Chasm of Doom. I like that. I just pinned Guara or Gora. Maybe that's how you say it. Gora the Explorer over there on TikTok. So that's what we're going to call this one, guys. The Chasm of Doom. It looks really cool. Very much like a chasm I would not want to go uh, exploring by myself, right? Be like, um, can you guys hold my hand? Hold my hand, guys, on YouTube. I need you to hold my hand. All right, let's come in here. This is a Paint with Josh original painting, right? I do offer prints in my store, but if you buy anything that's numbered, right, like a you know number 842, like this one, then you get the original canvas shipped to you. It's awesome. Now, we're going to come over here, and we're going to call this one Chasm of... Doom! Love that. It was painted on 630 of 23, and we're all going to go to paintwithjosh.com to find my schedule, to find my YouTube, and my Facebook, and my Instagram, to find my TikTok, to find everything, uh, to find my Amazon affiliate list, to find the gallery that we're in, and the gallery website. Go to paintwithjosh.com. You literally find everything over there. And all I'm going to do is take a bit of our red and a bit of our brown onto the brush. A little bit more brown. And a bit of our, uh, our liquid white. I almost forgot the name of it. There we go. And all we're going to do is just very lightly with the liquid white, it helps fill in all those little pores and dimples of the canvas. And so it becomes very easy to blend it in and match the colors just like that. Now this guy right on the corner, on the top, got the sides over there. This one over there. Now, you can buy this painting with a frame or without a frame. I always finish the sides just in case somebody buys it and they don't want to pay for the extra frame or they don't want to frame it. They just like the way the canvas looks. Then you got to finish the edges for them. Otherwise, it looks unfinished and funky on the side, right? So, very cool. Chasm of Doom. Everybody go follow Gora the Explorer. That was a really cool, uh, that's a cool little um, uh, screen name too. Gora the Explorer, if I'm saying it right. I don't know if I am. I'm very bad at pronunciation. All right. Nice clean brush, guys. Okay. Well, thank you guys for tuning in over there on uh, YouTube and over there on Facebook. And I'll say goodbye to you guys. And then we'll hang out on TikTok for just a few minutes, answer some questions and stuff to our little uh, end of the show wrap up deal, whatever we're calling it. So I love you guys over on YouTube. Thanks for all the thumbs up. Thanks for watching this one. I can't wait to see your version of it with just a few colors, just a few brushes. It's going to be awesome. Love you guys over on Facebook. Thank you both for being here and uh, just having a great time with all of us over here on TikTok. If you're not on TikTok, get over there. It's a fun little app and uh, more interactive. There's more people on it. You get more comments, tons of stuff. Just way better. So get over there. Uh, I love you guys though. And I'll always be right here on Facebook and right here on YouTube forever. So until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And ba ba. What a show. This one turned out great. This one turned out just fantastic.